Hey guys, welcome back to the all new Music in Motion. This is Project Elevation, and in this video, we're going to be covering the amplifier rack and wiring our amplifiers and DSP from Moscone. Let's go ahead and get into it. Alright guys, so Scott Miller back at you at Music in Motion here. We thought we had an easy task this time. Um, we've been running through some of the hard stuff, built the pillars like 13 times, got our sub subwoofer enclosures situated. The doors went pretty straightforward, but everything's just been kind of on par for us, right? So we're thinking, all right, we're gonna coast. We got this amp rack to do, wire a couple amplifiers, headphones and zen, we're gonna get into it. Yeah, right, dude. So we pull the back seat and this is what we get. You might ask, what is all that stuff? And I would answer, that's a great question. I know we have an amplifier back here. We have our telematics box back here. We got a power window motor back here. We got a high voltage box back here. We got some cab vents on the back wall. I mean, shit, we could probably put a table with seven seats and feed a family, you know, who knows? But um, what we're gonna try to do, the tricky part of this one is we gotta relocate a lot of components and our Moscone amplifiers, believe it or not, are not tiny. <laughs> So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start getting the equipment off of the back wall. So we have a lot of length on the harnesses, thankfully, so that's a blessing. So we're gonna go ahead and get those components removed off the back wall, see what kind of real estate we need for our amplifiers and our digital signal processor, and hopefully put the pieces of this puzzle together. So um, we're excited about getting this thing playing, and this is one of the last few pieces. So let's go ahead and get you guys set up in super fast YouTube mode because I'm gonna need some, some speed on my side so I don't look like, a, like an ace trying to relocate all the components on this back wall. But um, let's get you guys set up. Let's get tearing into this thing and just like eating an elephant, man, one bite at a time.
so what we're going to do at this point, we uh, take you down to Cable Town. It's time to get these things all cabled up and wired and ready to rip. So as you saw in the time lapse prior, we got all the components relocated. Some things have been fudged around just a little bit. Uh, believe it or not, these locating all these components is incredibly difficult on these trucks. Uh, the stuff we had to remove from the back of the seat just for fitment. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very tight. So um, got it in there though, and it all looks really good. So let's go ahead and get it wired. Hopefully wiring it will be a little more simplistic than actually getting everything located. And then, uh, yeah, we got some cool stuff. We're gonna tie into the factory amplifier here for the mid-base drivers. We've got the leads coming from the front for the three tweet. Uh, rear speakers are gonna stay on the amplifier. Then we have uh, sub leads coming from the box. We got um, the DSP is gonna control all of our signal to the amplifiers. The Moscone amps and the Moscone DSP do what's called DSP direct. So all of the gain structure, all that setup will be done through the DSP, which is a really, really nice feature. Um, Plus these are just gangster amplifiers, man. They make loads of power, they sound great. We're really, really excited. So power-wise, I mean, to break this down for you, I think, don't quote me here, but if I recall correctly, I think we're roughly 95 by two on the front channels, or I say front channels, but on, the, on channel A. So 95 by two there, we're, I wanna say 185 by two on channel B. And then I think we're 660 at one on channel C at four ohm, or we do, I think about 1020 at two ohm. So the way our system is gonna break down, we'll have 1020 per Utopia woofer. We'll have, we're bridging the mid-base drivers on channel B. So we're gonna have, what's that, 185? We'll have, what is it, about 290 watts, if I'm not mistaken? I don't know, I wasn't a mathematician, but I think about 290 watts, or right around 300 watts for the mid-base drivers. And then I think we're gonna be 95 on the tweets, 95 on the threes. So sum all that up and it means have a butt ton of fun turning the volume up. So it should be really, really cool. So power distribution is gonna go over here. Um, we'll show you once we get the seat back in here. The seat is, it's got some accesses in the seat that we're actually gonna dress up to do some access for our fuse distribution. Um, it'll house our power supply controller from XS Power. We do have that, uh, we're using their PSC90, which is it's a really, really cool piece. And it comes with a really nice controller to control it. Uh, so we'll get that flushed in. I think we have a trick little location for that that we're gonna go over. Um, but right now, like I said, cable town. So let's go ahead. We're gonna get you in super fast YouTube mode here. We'll get these amplifiers cabled up, lickety split. And we'll have this thing playing before you know it. So let's go ahead and get ripping.
Coming out of the time lapse, we got a lot of the cabling situated. Um, as you can see, the DSP is wired, probably 95%. We've got our RTC hub, which is our breakout box to control the sub level on the two different amplifiers. We've got our AMOS 96K, which is our high res streaming device for Moscone. Uh, what else we got? We got our lighting control box for all of our RGB LEDs. Got all of our cables dressed, everything's looking really nice. Um, power distribution over here. What we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna go ahead and make our connections at the factory amplifier. So we have, um, we've gotta steal some speaker wires from here, uh, primarily just the mid-bass drivers. We do have to install a load on these. Factory amplifier wants to see a load when they're disconnected, if I'm not mistaken, in this vehicle. Uh, so we'll play with some of that stuff, but we're gonna get our integration done here. We're gonna start getting our speaker wires all connected so we can do some testing. And I think, yeah, I still got quite a bit to do. So um, cables, 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 and more cables. So we're gonna keep going, keep on getting situated here. I just wanted to stop, give you guys a quick catch or upper if you would. And uh, yeah, we'll keep on pecking through. So back to super fast YouTube mode and we'll see you on the other side.
go. Coming out of that time lapse, let's get project elevation wrapped up, man. So this, uh, let's go over the amp rack. We'll show you where we're at with everything and uh, we'll get this one buttoned up. So it's been a cool project. So we got, um, this is everything on our cab wall here. It's a lot of goodies and not a lot of space. There are a couple things that changed from the time lapse that we did off camera and we'll talk about them just slightly. But uh, let's kind of see if we can take you through here. So from left to right, I guess we could say, we have, this is our camera box from GM. So factory component here. Uh, we've got rear window motor here, factory amplifier like we talked about here. We did do our integration at the factory amplifier for the couple speaker leads that we needed. Uh, we did not need to load channels like we had thought we needed to do, so that was kind of nice. Uh, to be honest, the integration on this was a lot more simplistic than we had, than we expected. Um, no active noise canceling to deal with. I mean, just nothing. It was pretty straightforward. We measured channels and we hooked up, so that was really cool. Um, we have our power distribution down here for the amplifiers. Obviously, our light engine for the Starlit headliner, the Rolls-Royce inspired headliner. Uh, two Moscone Pro 530s, which we had talked about. So the configuration on these, again, just... So configuration again on these, the way we did these is, uh, so we have one amplifier for the left side of the vehicle, which would be that side, I guess. Uh, one amplifier for the right side of the vehicle. So we'll talk about that first, and then we'll tell you where the changes were. But so the way this is set up is we bridged a pair of channels for the mid-base drivers. So if I'm not mistaken, that gave us roughly... 290 watts to the Utopia 8s in the front doors. Then we have, I think it was 95 by 2 on the front section of this for the 3 Tweet. So 290 on the 8, 95 on the 3, 95 on the Tweet. On the left side, same thing for the right side. And then subwoofers, again, two Utopia 10s under the seat. Uh, we're about 1,000 watts each. So really cool, lots of power, just good platform. Um, Continuing down here, uh, these are where some of the changes happened. So originally we started with a Moscone 8 to 12 aerospace in here. Uh, we did make some changes. We went to a Helix DSP Ultra. A uh, few reasons for it, nothing specific. They're both great DSPs. Uh, this is just where we chose to go in this one. So we did add a Moscone Pico, uh, one of the Pico 2s, uh, to add the rears, or just put some amplification on the rears. So before they were just still on the uh, factory amplifier so we just we again wanted to get them on the we focused more of the power from the amplifiers on the front stage and just we thought it was foolish not to go ahead and tie the rears in so put the pico in here as well <clears throat> um underneath there we do have a that high voltage box that's for the power inverter in the truck and then we have our controller from excess power that does our um our power supply so that's going to be for any kind of land power that we have hooked up so that way we car show mode, all that kind of stuff. So it's a really cool piece from XS2. It, uh, it's got a couple different functions it offers. And to be honest, I think we, we talked about this one in the, it's the same piece we have in that K5 Blazer that we did a video on. So again, if you guys have not watched that, go, ahead, go back and do it. But um, yeah, so all in all, really cool piece. It's, you could do it as a, a dual bank charger. You can run it as a power supply, just um, lots of different options there. So, and this one specifically, we run it as a, uh, as a power supply for car show mode so but essentially in a nutshell that's where we're wrapped up here on project elevation with our amp racks so that's all the components we mounted back there again lots of goodies and not a lot of space but it definitely can be done so um truck sounds amazing uh it's insane you know so the only other oh i'm sorry the only other thing we didn't talk about we did cheat we put a high res player in here so we are running a it's an astell and kern sp2000 uh, we're running low level into that dsp ultra just using the dax and the uh, the high res player so that is sound on another level man so i mean it's it's definitely a killer install so um but yeah let's wrap this thing up so that's everything power wise we talked about talked about our integration again pretty simple when we talk about the integration a couple all pass filters and things but uh again just things that we go through and measure and we address so um yeah i'll go ahead and plug us here so check us out on all of our social handles uh, music in motion bc Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, obviously the website, musicinmotion.com. And yeah, we're gonna wrap this one up. We'll see you guys on the next one, so.